After a long and brutal battle, Calamitous finally met her end. Magnus rushed to the Nether Realm portal to see if this was finally enough, but the portal was still closed for his friends. When Magnus was about to give up hope, he could see the essence of Supreme Calamitous reacting with the portal's magic, causing the gap between the realms to get thinner. As much as he tried, the essence alone could not open the portal. Then he had an idea. Maybe if he could combine the essence with the power of his strongest spells and Auric Tesla, he could amplify the magic. It was then at the Draydon's Forge that he crafted a spell that could harness the powers of eternity. Magnus could feel the energy of the universe coursing through him as he unleashed these powers in the Nether Realm. Once the dust had settled, Magnus opened his eyes to see that he and his friends were in a place that seemed strangely familiar. The spell had brought them back to Anna's world. His friends were finally free. There was a great reunion between Anna, Magnus, and their friends. But Magnus's feelings were bittersweet as he realized that as great as it was to see Anna and his friends, it was time for him to go back to the life he had built. With eternity in hand, he entered the portal thinking of home. To his surprise, he emerged back at his tower and realized that he had transformed the corrupt nether portal into a cosmic doorway to Anna's castle. He took comfort knowing that his friends were finally safe and that he could visit them anytime. As the sun went down, Magnus climbed the familiar steps in his tower, pulled out some parchment, and smiled as he started his next checklist. In the following days, Magnus started noticing changes in the world of Terraria. There was a strong wind rushing through the trees, and an oasis that formed in the desert. Now that Magnus had freed his friends, he decided to study and test the changes in Terraria, and share his findings with others. This way, Magnus could use his curiosity and affinity for research to help the community of other adventuring Terrarians. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage episode. Last episode, we defeated Supreme Calamitous and we saved our friends. And you can see right here, our portal to the Nether Realm has now been replaced by a portal to Anna's castle. This episode, we've got one last thing to do, which is the boss rush. It basically buffs all the bosses in the game and then you have to fight them all in a row. There's a couple things that I forgot to mention in episode 29 when we defeated Supreme Calamitous. First of all, the Ethereal Talisman um, has had an update and I installed the update before last episode. The devs have nerfed the Draconic Elixir. It no longer heals you to full health. The God Slayer Revival heals you to half health instead of 150 and Silva Invincibility heals you to half health when triggered. The cooldown for the drink got changed from 30 seconds to 60 seconds. And so it's a huge difference now, and that's actually what we used when we fought Supreme Calamitous. That was one of the things I had kind of noticed was that the God Slayer and Silva felt a lot weaker when I was fighting Supreme Calamitous. I wondered if it was maybe death mode, but it looks like it was actually the update that I installed. I think that same update also changed it so you can use mounts during the Terminus event or the boss rush event. So I think we're going to be able to use the Fab Soul mount, which will help us quite a bit during the Devourer of Gods. I've created a little arena with some of these candles that buff us, these right here. I've got this spot right here, which is going to be where we fight Supreme Calamitous. We'll stand right here, and I've got a space around it. We may have to do a few attempts, but I'm ready to go. First, we got the Queen Bee. This just feels like a weapon showcase. Nothing hard yet. But if you notice, I usually end the boss rush pretty quickly on my weapon showcases, so I don't get to the hard bosses a lot. This is doing pretty well. I might even turn off my map for a little bit, just to have more visual space. And we'll try to use a few different weapons here. Man, we're doing good here. <laughs> okay, let's try using Eternity. Oh yeah. The power. <laughs> 
And we'll just throw some of these down for the Eye of Cthulhu. See how he likes these. I usually don't really take too much care on the fights for the early stages. Ooh, I need to start using Vemence. We can use Fabstaff. Fabstaff seems to lag the game a lot, which is a bit unfortunate. Wow. It's doing really good damage, though. Maybe let's try Staff of the Bleshy here. I think this could be a good boss for it. One thing I don't like about the Bleshy is that it makes you get too close to the enemies, I feel like. Ooh, here we go. We got some Golem. Very nice. Oh, we need to use the Arms Crystal, too. Okay, this time, let's use Vemmets. Yeah, that was good. And now we can finish him off with Yarm's Crystal. Boom. Okay, maybe let's use Eternity. I'm not sure which weapon is good on this guy. Oh, that, that seemed to be good. Use Vemence on the head, and then just focus the rest on the head. Yeah, that worked out really well. Ooh, Astrum Arius. Keep our distance from this guy. I know he can do some good damage. I missed my adrenaline there. Sweet. Whoa. <laughs> For a second there, I thought it was the Devourer of Gods mechanic, and I got scared. Let's see how Eternity does. This is probably not the best weapon for this fight, but it works. Ooh, the power of a mage. <laughs> I really like the Vemence attack. Someone recommended it in the comments, and I'm really glad they did. Okay, we'll just go Eternity on the Wall of Flesh. I think that will do well. And there we go. Pretty easy fight. Ooh, Skeletron. I like this one. I feel like Skeletron's one of those bosses that you never get to fight enough, because I usually only fight him one time each playthrough. Most of the other bosses in the game I fight a lot more. Ooh, we gotta get into this guy. There we go, he'll slow down now. See if we can get him in the fire. Come on, you know you want to come through this fire. <laughs> this one's fun. It goes so crazy. I love like super fast desert scourge. Got him, that was no issue. Ooh, Lunatic Cultist. I think I know which weapon I'm gonna use on you, mister. Yeah, I think Eternity's gonna do just fine. He's kind of stuck on the bottom there. 
but I will not complain about that. Keep our distance from this guy. Part of the good thing about Boss Rush, in my opinion, is getting to just re-listen to all of the awesome music from the playthrough. Get a jam for a little bit. And the bosses stay alive long enough, generally, to have a little bit of time to listen to the music. Pretty easy there. Ooh, Ceaseless Void. Maybe we'll go with Yarm's Crystal on this one. Sweet. Whoa, that was fast. I'd be interested if there's any classes that can do this well other than Mage. Because this just seems incredibly easy for most of Boss Rush with the power of Eternity and Vehemence and stuff. Give me flashbacks of the Devourer of Gods. I'm getting scared already just thinking about him. Let's stay clear of him. He seems to be doing quite a bit of damage. Ooh, Duke Fishron. Not good. Luckily, we've got so much movement speed, we can do pretty well against them. Like, we almost have adrenaline, too. Nice. That was easier than I thought it would be. Okay, what do we got next? Ooh, Moon Lord. I think we're good. I think we just need to get eye now. Perfect. Take that, Moon Lord. No match for the power of eternity. Oh, crud. Run! Yep, we can use mounts now. I love it. This is a bit of a cheese method, but sometimes you just gotta cheese. I think we're getting pretty far into the boss rush. Not sure what we got next. Ooh, Plague Bringer, Goliath. This is gonna be tricky. Haha, -ha, there we go. I think after Providence we fight Supreme Calamitous. So we need to make sure we're standing in the right spot when we defeat Providence. Who will dare approach? Okay, Leviathan. Sweet. I guess we can do a little bit of a kiting method. I usually don't leave the ocean biome, but now that we're outside of the ocean, I don't think it really matters. A 
Whoa, we're getting pretty far away from this guy. Whew, we're doing so much damage. This is insane. Okay. Some adrenaline here. I think they updated the uh, movement patterns of the Slime God centerpiece. I think I read that in a patch note somewhere. Ooh, Providence time. Okay. This is going to be tricky. Oh no, we're taking way too much damage. Did I get too far away? This is not good. I think this might end it. Oh my goodness. I was not expecting that. I guess what I'll do is just skip through the easy fights, get back to Providence, and then give that another attempt. Okay, we're back to Providence. And let's see how this goes. Seems like we're doing much better this time. Okay, there we go. Let's get to our arena. Now time for Supreme Calamitous. Whew, here we go. Now things have gotten serious. Okay, all the way to the next phase. Whew, why'd I do that? Okay, next phase. Man, we like instantly activate the next phases here. Whew. Ooh, I thought, I thought I was gonna miss that one. Okay, I gotta wait for a second here. Chill out for a little bit. Okay, we're on to the next phase. I think we got orbs coming in. Ah. Oh my goodness. I'm choking, I'm choking. I can't choke. Oh 
Oh no, I was so close. All I needed to do was stay alive for just another second and I would have DPSed her down because we'd already beaten the last orbs. And all you need to do is a couple quick hits. If I would have dodged one more thing, it would have been pretty hard to get to the next phase because we would have spawned Yaren immediately. And we'd already procced all of our God Slayer and all that sort of stuff, so. I need to get to Calamitous spawn. Okay, that's good enough. Man, usually I can start Calamitous with like a clear head, but after fighting Providence, my head is anything but clear. Boss Rush is exhausting. Ah, that didn't look like it was going to hit me. Orbs are coming now. Just gotta be ultra careful. I think we're done. I wonder if we can wait for a second. I don't want to risk it. Let's get to the bottom of our arena. Magnus, whatever you do, do not fly into those tornadoes, and that is an order. We've defeated Yaren so many times. We just need to tap into those 55 times we killed him or whatever. <laughs> Gotta tap into the hype music, channel the hype. We got him. We are good to go. Oh my gosh. This is so cheese. Did we do it? Did we do it? What? Oh my gosh, guys, we got a rock. It's the first object Xerox ever created. We did it. The Fabsol mount is a little bit cheesy, but I did not want to risk dying on the Devourer of Gods. And it looked like I picked the right weapon. The Dance of Light did 
really good work on the Devourer of Gods. Now that we've defeated the boss rush, I wanted to talk a little bit about the intro where Magnus is studying the new things that are changing in the world. What that's hinting at is the fact that I want to bring this base and Magnus into a vanilla world. And obviously I'll have to remove some of Magnus's items, but he'll be equipped with different items. And I want him to do showcases for all the 1.4 stuff. I think that'd be a really cool way to have our studious mage go through and start studying all the new items and maybe do boss tutorials and things like that. Another thing I wanted to mention is that we've got a Discord. I mentioned it a few videos back when we were fighting Providence and I'm putting the link in the description of the videos. I hope you enjoyed the video and the Magnus the Mage series. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.